All right, so this is the a tutorial for a short tutorial for the Easy TF2 Mapper. Uh, you, the first thing you're going to want to do when you want to use this is go to tf2mapper.com. It'll have a bunch of web or information on the website that you can read before you do it. Uh, but basically, if you want to get into it and learn from this, you're going to click download, and it'll have a bunch of downloads for developers. There's the source code right here that. Uh, download. There's also the required modules for the source code, but it's much harder to use the source code because of all the modules and you have to install Python and such, so it's not recommended. It's a lot easier just to uh, go to the Windows executable se section and download the latest zip. There's also an installer, but you have to run this as an administrator and it's and it's pretty buggy, so it's just the easiest way is to install the executable. And Basically, everything's stupid and only download the Windows executable. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, so once you've downloaded the latest version or the version of your choosing, put it in an empty folder and extract it into the empty folder so there's not the rest of the stuff. I'm going to delete this just in case it causes some errors shouldn't but it could and then in here there's a lot of files but you want to find the easy tf2 mapper.exe run that it'll pop up and say that it's a unrecognized app because i don't know how to get around that but you just click run anyway and it will have all the stuff it imports the ugly logo and it'll say you might have to alt tab to find the dialog but that shouldn't happen if you don't click and this the, and this is basically the input dialog where you say how big you want your map to be. For every one in the width and the height, it's 512 hammer units. Uh, so that's pretty big, but you're gonna definitely want to make it more than three. For this one, this is this will be really small, but I'm just gonna make it five and five. And then the amount of levels is how tall it is, and that's in increments of 448, I believe, which is high enough to have two levels. All right, so the first thing uh, you notice is the incredible user interface uh, with the launch screen background, but also there's a bunch of things and it might be a little confusing. So the first, the first thing is the rotations and levels section of the UI it has the two rotation buttons that you can choose how uh, your currently selected prefab is rotated. So this thing in the middle also shows what the currently selected one is. You can also press the left and the right buttons to rotate it on your keyboard. And the, here's the level, which you click it and you can choose a level, or you can go up and down with the level buttons. And then here are the list of prefabs, and you can rearrange them with the up and down arrows, delete one, which you shouldn't do uh, with the default ones generally, and then an air, a plus where you can create your own prefab, which is something that's completely different, and uh, we'll get into that in a different video. So I'll just make a short little introduction, introductory map, uh, which basically shows the important things. So the health rooms, uh, they have a little arrow or a little red thing on the side where the door is, and on the blue it's just there's no black on that side, so you want to make sure they're rotated properly. And uh, you can make just pretty much any map you want. I mean, obviously, it has to have some rhyme or reason for it to work at all, but you can do some wacky stuff. There's a lot of fun prefabs, like a nuke, some lasers, a death pit, uh, which plan to add more of those because they're kind of fun. Right now, there's only one game mode. I mean, you can obviously have no game modes, but there's one game mode that actually works. Well, that's easy to get working, and that's the King of the Hill. And so, there might be adding more, but if you want to play different maps, you can use King of the Hill. Here are the ammo and health huts, which have the same principle with the little thing on the side showing where the door is. I'll just add a little heal beam on each side, and then... Uh, just finish it off with some flooring, but then Trans what? Trans levels. Yeah, and uh, so you notice when I did it, I made it have two levels, 
and this is just using the first level. So the if I want to add a level, I'm going to want to click the next, the ramp to the next level. Obviously, you can build, or uh, you can build on the second level, but it's not going to be easy to get there in the game. So you choose the ramp, and there's an arrow that's pointing basically what direction the ramp goes up. The icon is not very good, but it basically shows what direction the ramp is going up. So if I click it here, the ramp is going up and to the left. So if I go to this this part of the uh, this the second level, I don't want to put anything on the square where the ramp was because it would uh, basically impede on the ramp actually being able to deliver the player to the next level, or the player to be able to use the ramp to get to the next level. So up here, I'll put like some ammo huts and some health huts, which um, shouldn't be too hard. And then at the backs, oh, actually, I'm going to put it. So there's no walls behind these two prefabs. So uh, so I'm going to make it so you can't escape and fall down to the next level. So if you want if you don't like what you've done, you can remove a prefab by control clicking it or you can after you've clicked it, you can hit control Z to undo it. And all right, basically that's that's the second level that I made this corner incorrectly rotated. There we go. And once you have your map done, obviously this is kind of an incomplete, poor map, but it is it is what it is. Alright, so you may notice when it started, there are two pop-ups, which are basically changing the skybox, which is selected. So I'll choose the train yard, and there was another one, which was change the level, which is here, which you start off. Generally, you want to start off building on the first level. There are a bunch of... There are a bunch of things like creating a prefab and opening the developer console, which is for developers, and it's not very useful. And then there's some help, which have links to the reference guide and such. But after you've done it and you want to save your work, you hit save uh, or control S, and you can save it wherever as a .exam file. This file is just for use in the mapper. You can't actually... Um, you can't actually use uh you can't actually use this with hammer so when you want to use it with hammer and tf2 and stuff you're going to want to hit export there are two which is the vmf and the bsp the vmf is a hammer save file so once you export it as a vmf you can load it into hammer make some changes and then export it as a bsp and use it with tf2 or you could just export as a bsp and it goes right into uh, export, uh, converting it to a BSP file, which then you can load in TF2 and use. Um, so right here, when you click export, it'll ask for how tall you want it to be. It'll say uh, however many levels times 512 is the minimum recommended, but you could make this much higher. You can make it lower and kind of screw the map up completely, but I'll just make it, uh, what the fuck? All right, so uh, that didn't work for some reason. So uh, as long as you made a save and it didn't work, you could recover your work by opening up the save file we made, which you can do by control open or file then open. So we saved it on the desktop as not c.ezm. A very clever pun, and uh, there will be both levels working. Uh, and what? You can do then is Control Shift E for exporting as a BSP, and as long if you don't have a TF2 installed in the default directory, it will ask you for finding the bin file of TF2 in a file browser, and you click through that, find the and Team Fortress 2 slash bin, and it'll work, and you'll never have to go through that again after you've set it up properly. So once it's done this, it's exported the BSP to your output folder in the mapper program as well as the VMF if you wanted to edit it and it's also moved the BSP to the maps folder of TF2. So you can click and click open TF2 and as long as you set up that finding the TF2 folder you can load it directly from the program. 
and this will take a while to load and I'll and I'll just go over extra stuff here so there's changing the hammer directory which is if you uh, open it in hammer uh, and if you want to open hammer or export and then directly open hammer uh, you can use this to change what your directory is where the hammer.exe is stored which is in the tf slash bin folder so when you open up the console, type tf2 map, tf2 mapper output, and it'll load. Hopefully this works. And your computer will heat up a lot. And, well, it shouldn't if your computer is not a potato like mine. Well, they, those heat up. Alright, so once it works, once it goes up into the game, you're going to want to choose your class and uh, or any team. If you have both spawn rooms, it should work for any team. Uh, so my game is a little broken after I installed Mr. Slin stuff, but uh, it, it all looks like it's working. The lighting is messed up because the environmental lighting is not very uh, good. Here are the two, the two health kits. Ooh, the health, uh, the ammo huts and the two health huts. I'll also demonstrate the heal beam uh, prefab, which is basically a trigger hurt that does negative damage and then will heal you up when you stand near it, sort of like a dispenser. And uh, basically, that's about it. And uh, I mean as long as your game actually works and the spawn rooms you can't go into the enemy spawn or anything and the only the only thing i'd say is really bad is that the we only have the style prefabs for i'm just going to stop talking because this part this information is really irrelevant